Well, welcome back to the shop. Uh, I got the block in, got the engine manifolds on. I uh, did the exhaust off camera, just a lot of fiddly work there. Um, good practice with the TIG, uh, but we got uh, two and a half stainless all the way back from the manifolds. Uh, so pretty happy with that. Nice and clean, should hold up pretty well here. Um, we'll see how she goes. Nice thing with exhaust, you can always swap it out. Um, not the end of the world if you have to do anything different there. Uh, but nice to have the intake manifolds on. I uh, went with the Remflex gaskets there just to catch a little bit of the funkiness with these big six inline six manifolds. They're a little bit finicky. Uh, these were actually pretty straight when you got them on, uh, but it's still nice to have that thick crush man uh, gasket to seal that up. Uh, but most of the work today, going to be getting all the little bits on the motor, kind of prepping for first fire. Uh, I got the sniper just bolted down. Um, obviously no linkages, no wiring. Um, it's just got the adapter plate for the 2F on there. Um, and I did run the uh, oxygen sensor while I was doing the exhaust work, um, so that's all in there. Um, so there'll be a little bit of work on the sniper today, getting the fuel lines bent up. we got to kind of creep them around the front. Um, just going to do some rough wiring. It's not going to be tucked in and pretty, uh, just enough to get a first fire going. I'm uh, going to have to run to the fuel pump, that kind of stuff. Um, the rest should be pretty plug and play, but like I say, the loom's just going to be kind of hanging out until we get, get everything dunked on. Um, and then, yeah, just lots of weird stuff. Probably going to do the valve adjust, at least a rough first cut to make sure there's nothing funky there. Uh, I'm going to throw the radiator on so we have some cooling, so when I fire it up, if we want to run it, we can run it a little bit longer uh, for that break-in procedure. Um, so just odds and ends like that. Uh, starter. I got a whole list. Anyway, enough yeah, and let's get to it. Let's uh, start getting this puppy buttoned up and uh, hopefully we'll hear a run by the end of the episode. Let's get to it. So catching kind of this general area first, um, partly because it's where the soft line comes off the fuel filter. So I have a pressure regulating fuel filter for the sniper. So instead of using the Regulator in there. I uh, got the regulator and the fuel filter. Pretty common setup. Saves running two lines all the way to the sniper. Um, pretty easy setup there. Um, so you get a little better view. Um, so just got that uh, two. Get out of the way, plug. Um, it's a dual inlet, so it's an inlet outlet. Um, Fuel filter, pretty common from the sniper setup. Like I say, basically you can run that one or you can use the return line from the sniper. Like I say, a lot of people run this one just to keep less fuel lines running up. So you can see the duals coming back. Um, got the Walbro 392. I think they might have finally changed that part number. Um, tucked back here with the pre-filter. So that's all good to go. That's all snugged in. Do need to run fuel, fuel pump wiring up. Um, I got to check and see if I've got the little itty bitty eye fittings for the wiring. Um, not sure why they use such a small one there. I ran the same thing on my diesel. Um, and they're a weird little fitting for the amount of wire you need to run the, the big fuel pump. Um, but otherwise, everything's tucked in back here, so it's sitting pretty good. Just got to, again, put some soft lines off this filter and off this pressure return to go to the fuel tank. I'm just going to dump them in a five-gallon jug to test. Um, it's good enough to get her, get her running. Those are soft lines that go up through the floor pan anyway, through that grommet. Uh, so I really don't have to worry too much here. Once I put the tub on, it should be good to go. Um, but in general, just trying to button up this area, partly because that's where the soft line comes through to go to where the fuel line would normally come up. Um, so normally it routes up through here, kind of behind the alternator bracket and across. Um, but there is basically a tray that sits here kind of underneath the battery battery mount um, so you kind of lose access uh, but you also kind of need it there to know where you can't run stuff uh, so just trying to get what work I can get done here first uh, so I just got the starter kind of hanging on here I got to finish buttoning that up uh, then we got to run some of the wiring off the starter um, which we'll kind of need that anyway um, there should be a grounding strap that runs here Basically, it'll use that same grounding point that I got here that it's used on this fuel filter. Um, so it should just jump down. I'll have to remember which lug goes where. Um, 
but that's easy enough, but it's another one of those ones where it's good to get done before that tray goes on because it does start basically right here. You can see the that's the bolt hole for the tray. Um, and basically they give you a little itty bitty cutout to bring that fuel line up. Um, so we'll get the starter finish buttoned up uh, or tightened down so she's at least in place. We'll see what wiring we need to run. I do need to clean that up a little bit with the degreaser. Um, but we should be able to at least get the positive on, uh, get the ground strap that goes between. Like I guess I'm pretty sure it runs to that bolt hole on the frame. Where it was on the starter, I don't recall. It may just be one of the, the mounting bolts, um, but we'll look her up and see. Anywho, let's get to her. <laughs> So brake lines are snugged up, soft line is on, grounding strap is up to the starter, they're all snugged on, the rest of this is above board. This is the rear wiring harness, just kind of hanging out with its friend, the clutch slave hose. So this guy just dunks on here, just thread it along the bolt. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, it is. Oddly enough, I think my tray has got to come back out and it'll do her, <laughs> do her twice, do her right. Um, I thought the battery standoff went on the outside of the frame. I thought it was flipped around 180 degrees. Um, so I thought the tray was going to be the easier one first. But alas, thing is I'm not sure how you weasel it in there. I guess like that. It is still going to be a bit of a fun time getting your finger in there. Alrighty, well after that little adventure, time to actually bend some fuel lines. So, got the soft line coming up this side. I guess you guys could be pointing down a little bit further. So, soft line's coming up, going to come underneath that alternator bracket. Um, I've got the regulator side capped off on the holly. Unfortunately, they, it's too bad they're not the other way around because that would just be a perfect little jumping off point to run down the head. Uh, but we're going to have to use this side, um, which right now I got a bar fitting on there. So I've just got a A and a hard line fitting there and a piece of TIG rod. Actually, that bend is pretty good enough for what I need. He bends like this. Too short.
Uh, got a runner through the straightener. That's just a couple of wheels. And if you set them at the right height, she will peel it back out. Kind of handy for shipping. It's a little bit easier to work with some of this stuff too. Um, you don't know, have to worry about getting those sticks. It's a pretty good guess. So once you get the rollers set, um, you can kind of run her through and get her good and straight. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Be enough for what we're working with. So this is the old factory fuel line bracket. I did open them up a little bit. They were whatever size the factory was. Three eighths lines a little bit bigger than what I ran for the carb. But that should give me a jumping off point as far as height wise goes. Put that in. Get back out of there. So this is a pretty good uh, approximation of the bend I can do if I go into what I can reach with that fitting. That does take me down to the bottom there, takes my distance in here, and if we start, it's probably going to be about there. So I ended up just measuring back uh, using my template, uh, started from the end, brought it back, gave myself a little bit of extra room, um, don't want to end up too short, but don't want to waste too much material, uh, so I gave myself probably a good six to eight inches of extra just to work with, but should be able to give our first 90 there and start seeing the uh, See how we get it to shape up. So we need to get that 90 in, then get the next 90 coming up. We do need to kind of meet at that 45. So you do need the right distance offset there to get that 45 to meet up. Not really back. Sit up right. Uh, so bent in a little bit of a step down there. Um, I do need the pipe to be lower pick up this 45, but I also wanted to kind of run parallel to everything here versus at an angle. Uh, you could have just sloped it down, but uh, this will give me another nice 90 here as well. So I think that's what we're going to run with. Um, Got to bend our next 45 up to try and meet our fuel inlet. And then from there, it should be pretty straightforward. First things first, got to get you a new battery. So just using one of my 90 degree bends off of that scrap piece I had, just to get an idea of where it fits with the fitting. So there she comes down pretty good. But come out a little bit. Pinch in there. Right there. I have a marker. Should need to start my bend right about there. So there's my mark to start my radius. Bring that fella in here. You guys are kind of in the way. Uh, so if I bring him into the zero, there's a 90 degree bend, there's a 45. But I need my 45 to 
75. That way. All right, mark on my zero. Bring it back around. Come around my 90. Should give us our 45 up to the fuel injection. I guess we'll see. So we got the uh, fittings on the ends of the line, got it all bent up, got her mounted up to the holly. I uh, just got it finger tight now, gonna have to snug that up. Uh, should put a little piece of tape on there behind me. Otherwise, it comes down off that 45 and then bends up just to give you a nice horizontal run with the valve cover up to where the original passage point was. Just gives you clearance. There you got another view of that step up. Um, uses the factory clamps, comes down, does a 90, comes behind the water pump, thermostat housing, uh, comes down, uses the slots where they originally came out, it's got a 45 and a 90, um, it just meets up pretty nicely with how the hose wants to come out from the fuel filter on the frame rail, um, and then obviously everything running back is the, the wall drill. So just got to nip the hose, slide that on, put a hose clamp on it. Um, I may try and figure out a one extra bracket here um, just to hold somewhere. Um, I don't think it's going to go anywhere once you got it on the sniper. Once you got it on the sniper, it's pretty, it's not really going to go anywhere, but we'll see. They did have one more, they did have one more clip. I don't recall where it was offhand. I think it was somewhere down by the fuel pump, to be honest. Um, but anywho, uh, we'll get that nipped, clipped, bring you back, and see what we're on to next. So just chipping away at all the parts and pieces still. Uh, put the catch tray that goes under the radiator, I guess you'd call it that. Um, Tuck the belt in before I got that just to give me a little extra room. I did dunk the alternator on in a very loose sort of way um, just to one, get her off the bench, and two, it's got to go on sometime. Um, if I recall, the back pulley was for the smog pump. So we got a runner on the front. I'm sure I'll drop some of this hardware because that's what I do. Ooh, almost lost that washer. It has been nice. I got a lot of this little stuff cleaned up over the winter time um, when you've got those dark, dark days up here. Um, so it's been nice when, once kind of to this point you can kind of keep jamming things on where the manifolds were clean. Uh, thermostat housing was all cleaned up. Alternator bracket was all cleaned up. Yada, yada, yada. This pulley is all cleaned up. Um, so that's been kind of nice. Um, when you do hit a part that you haven't uh, haven't done yet, it's funny how much it slows you down. Uh, but, so we got those fellas. Fans got to go on.
Alrighty, fans on, snug up the alternator. It's all cozied in. This guy's snugged up. Fuel lines are good, fuel lines clear. Belt alignment looks good. So that is the one, because yeah, you would need to go. Other one runs a smog pump, so it's water pump to crank. It's smog pump over here, it uses that inside belt. So next up is the radiator. I can't see. Yep. So you can just stay there for a minute. It's looking better. So it's just got two standoffs underneath. Uh, you can just see it poking through. They basically got a canvas rag between the two to kind of protect the paint. Um, so those are back in place. Got a couple nuts that go on from underneath. And then we've got these two support rods that'll come from these brackets, a little bit of bracketry. And then it must hit one of these holes here. Which one? We'll find out shortly. <laughs> I'm guessing it's that guy. Uh, but they are two different lengths for two different sides. So we'll get those dunked in. That'll get that at least stable. We'll make sure everything clears. Let me start running some hoses. Well, now we got a 50-50 on long versus short. I'm pretty sure this side is the long side. I think the other side goes to the battery. Get on there. What are you doing? And back underneath. Thing got dusty hanging out in the basement all winter. So radiator's back in. It did take a little bit of a ding along the way. Uh, it's been patched. We'll see how noticeable it is through the front grill. My guess is not a whole lot. We'll see where it lands with the whole face. Um, nice thing is you can still get these radiators fairly reasonably. Um, so not too worried there. Worst case, if there's issues, we can pull it out later. It is just one, two, three, four, like four bolts on each side. I think there's three on the other side. Um, and you can slide it out of this bracket. Um, so I put it in as one assembly because we got everything apart. Uh, if you were just changing the radiator, you just pull those four bolts, sucker out the top. Obviously, you got to drain the coolant and all that jazz. Uh, but it's also not the end of the world. So we'll run it. I uh, plan on getting everything up to temp before I put all the body and stuff on to catch any leaks or any quirks um, so we'll get another check there before we get everything in the way uh, worst case if we catch it then now is a great time to do it um, but uh, next up uh, hoses so we got a little shorty that runs there if I recall and there's a little double that comes around on this side and goes up to the water pump which is boy hiding way back there. Um, so I'm gonna snag those. We'll get those dunked on. I'm just gonna put a bypass loop in. There is a cutoff that goes to the heater core here. Um, basically it comes off the radiator hose, runs down a pipe back to the selector valve. Um, I should be able to just put a loop in uh, basically to this other side here, because uh, this is the other end of that whole circuitry. So one end goes to the hot side of the Heater core, the other end comes back home. I can just bypass that heater core and put a hose, provided I can find one in my stash. That'll run from basically down here up to there, bypass everything. Then I can at least fill her up. I'm just gonna fill her up with water. Um, 
run it, and then we can flush that out. There's a nice little drain, um, and then we'll put coolant back in there. Um, that'll catch any garbage that might be lingering. There shouldn't be any. It was flushed nice and clean. Um, but I got to pull that heater core loop anyway. Um, so there's no point in putting antifreeze in it when you know you're going to drop that loop anyway. So we'll just put some water in it and run it. Um, anywho, time to get some hoses in. So on to this side, it's a little funkier. They give you a got the correct bend but it's got a weird extra part that I don't need. This lower should fit on pretty good although I think it could use a little bit of a trim. He's a little bit long to get where he's going. There. I'm going with that orientation. Let's see how we do. Well, it was a little snug to get you in there, but so coming off the water pump, she's clamped on, got her elbow trimmed, fit to our heater core adapter basically, they got a pipe with a T for a elbow. Um, anyway, those are clamped down and we're clamped down on the bottom, bottom inlet to our radiator. So we're good up through there. Uh, the little elbow by the thermostat housing to the water pump, that one's all snug down and the top Top elbow up to the top of the rad is good. This goes to our overflow tank. Uh, if I recall, it bolts to the fender. So we can't have anything there yet, but she's ready to rock and roll. Um, so we've got to come off of this fitting. And he goes up to this tube. If I tagged him in, he goes to two studs on the push rod cover. Um, so he comes over. There is a selector valve here so you can shut off the heat to the heater core in the summer. It's got a little pull cable. Um, and then comes out the other side of the heater core or vice versa. I don't remember which way it flows. Um, and into this fitting on the head. So I can at least get this line on. We'll get him cut. We got some 5 ace heater hose from Gates. So we'll cut a nub, put him there. That'll just stay. And then what we'll do is just run a quick little loop from here to over here, just for now, um, until we got the firewall back on. So let's get a couple of little pieces of that cut. Same dealio. Pretty quick. Alrighty, we're back. Uh, dunked a rear heater hose on. This is just the last bit of what I had from the gates. Um, it's good enough. Um, it's just temporary. It closes that heater core loop. Comes around to this side on the head. Uh, you can see where she goes on. Uh, I've also got a, just a temporary uh, stub for PCV valve over to this vacuum fitting. Um, I didn't have any caps, so it was just easier to run a stub of hose across. It actually may be pretty close. I think there's a clip on the air breather uh, that keeps this guy sort of where he's supposed to go because it does run across like this. Um, but that'll at least keep us out of vacuum leak territory. Uh, same way with this fella. Uh, so he comes off. He would normally run to the brake booster. So I just threw a stub of hose on there that I also had and just capped it off with a bolt. Um, should keep us from having vacuum leaks. Otherwise, heater core loop runs down to the T. Bottom rad hoses are all tied in. Fuel line clears everything still, so that's good. Rad's all nice and snug. Uh, this side's all buttoned up. Like I say, this one, uh, this was an emissions port, uh, so he's capped off for now. Um, this is the one for the brake booster. This is our PCV. Uh, there was one on the sniper that needed a cap. I actually did have one cap, um, so these, these guys are capped for now. Um, I think one of them will get used somewhere around here for the uh, EVAP charcoal canister. Um, Got to run that guy in to purge the fuel tank vapors. Um, I don't remember which one it needs, but it's not needed for the first start. 
Otherwise, exhaust is all buttoned up. Um, so I think uh, we are on to doing some wiring. Um, so we got to get things that plug into here plugged in. Um, I'm going to make a little short harness for the fuel pump. Um, and then the rest of it should just be kind of plug it in and a couple taps for 12 volt positive. Um, so it should be pretty light, mostly just a lot of plug-in stuff, um, and see what we got. And then from there, uh, we can throw some liquids in the cooling system and some thicker liquids in the, in the crankcase, um, throw a filter on, and we should be getting pretty close. But I think first up, let's chip away at some wiring. So, cracked open the bundling of wires they added zip tied. Um, this guy's pretty easy. He's just going to go to the coolant sensor. Uh, we may end up repinning that so it has a little bit nicer run. Uh, but in theory, that's all that that guy needs. Um, this is one of the main plugs. This is for the little dash unit, so he can come out. That one's for the oxygen sensor. So those two should just be friends. Yep. It's another one of those ones where they gave you 18 miles of wire and you really don't need it. Um, so they'll dangle that back over the trans. Um, And then we just got these couple harnesses left. So one's the screen, one's the input-output harness, and the other one is the main harness. So, so there's our main main harness. A bunch of stuff that we'll have to mount once we got the firewall on. This is going to have to dangle for now. So this is their fuse block. Guy is there. Clicky clicky relay. So this is going to be tying into our HyperSpark distributor on the other side. I don't recall what the pink was. Coil negative. Blue is the fuel pump output. She's driven by a relay, so that gives you a little extra snort. Red and black are going to go to the battery. Blue, we got to run all the way over to the fuel pump. Looks like they gave us plenty. So depending on where it makes sense to tag these guys on, that'll drive how much we got to tailor off of this. But if you look, they gave us enough to run to the rear of the vehicle and back. So I think we got enough. I think, I think we're good. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is peel off a little bit, um, enough to run from the fuel pump up to where the factory harness has a splice in it. Um, and then I got to find a ground of a similar gauge and I'll run him up as well and we can kind of dunk him in. So getting a few more things sorted out. Uh, with the HyperSpark. Everything's just laying willy-nilly for now. Um, as far as I know, yellow should be unused, so I should be able to depin that. Purple and green run to the distributor. Uh, distributor does fit nice, uh, so there's an example of how she sits on the 2F, tucks in, kind of like the factory one. Um, so purple and green are that distributor signal. Pink, they're at least sort of consistent there. That's going to be switched Switch 12 volt, same as coming from the same as coming from the sniper. Um, so those two are going to run to switched. Um, got the ignition module just sitting here. It's actually going to go over on the driver's foot well, I think, where the old emissions analog computer went. Uh, but it's got a feed to the battery. It's got this red and white fella. Uh, red is going to be switch 12 volt. Why they're inconsistent there is kind of interesting. I'm surprised they didn't make it pink. Um, and then white's going to run across to our points feed. And then they've got a plug 
that just runs through their coil. Uh, so that just is a plug and play. Um, again, it's going to be hard to tell on exactly how all the wiring lays out. Um, we'll figure that out once the firewall and cowling gets in there. Uh, but we should at least have all the bits and pieces working and know what needs to go where, which would be good. Uh, so just slowly kind of working through, going to tie together all my switched and tie together all my main feeds. I do need to pick up some heavier gauge wire to run to that fuel pump. Looks like they use about 14, maybe 12. Um, and I only have like 16 or 18, so I gotta go pick up some, uh, at least some ground wire. Um, I don't know that I'll need it for anything else. I think everything else is pretty long. Uh, the only thing I'm missing is that ground for the fuel pump. Theoretically, I could jumper it right to the frame, um, but I may just run it up to the battery and uh, call it a day, because I gotta run other harnessy stuff up anyway. Um, so there she is all laid out a little bit. Um, so this is that extra feed harness on the holly side, or the sniper side, I guess it's all holly. Um, and this is that white wire that I'm going to need to tie in for that uh, point signal. Uh, there's a few others I may end up using out of here. I think one of them I'm going to trigger the emissions charcoal canister valve because um, you can control that a little bit better. Um, it's easy enough to do. You can trigger it based on throttle input, stuff like that. Um, but otherwise, I think points output is this white one. Um, so there's your... If you focus, there's the points output white. And if I recall, that's got to run over to the hyper spark side. So. That's the only one I really need out of this wiring pack for at least the initial start, so he's got to run across. And then I think that's most of the bits and pieces, and then we just got to kind of tidy it up a little bit. At least enough to get things out of the way. So I'm going to check that out, going to kind of bundle things together, and we'll see what we got. So we've got everything sort of cleaned up, tucked away. Obviously it's not where it needs to be, but at least it's not drooping and dangling with a big tire big old burns dust. Um, so I've got the O2 sensor run down, tucked out of the way so it doesn't touch on the exhaust manifold here. Um, otherwise most of the harnesses come back around the back of the block. Uh, I've got a bundle of pinks and reds, so there's two two pinks and a red. Those are all switch 12 volt, uh, sniper, and a couple for the hyper spark. Um, so those all need to get switched so when you turn it on they're going to get fired up. Uh, I've got two pairs of feeds that would run to the battery. My guess is we can kind of make a harness that cleans that up a little bit. Um, but for now we've got two hots, two browns that are all going to run to the battery. Um, and we've got one white coming from that big input-output pack on the sniper. He feeds into the HyperSpark. I've just got the HyperSpark ignition box sitting on the frame rail over there. He's got a couple looms that come across and runs down to the coil box and the other one runs into the distributor. So distributor sits in nice, pretty happy there. Tucks in kind of where the stock one was, unlike the kind of big GM HEI ones. It's a little more standard size. Um, and then we've just got our blue fuel pump wire. It needs to go down to that wall for 392. Um, I've got to look which one's positive, which one's negative, uh, but i got to basically make up a little harness to get me up to Probably about here, um, so a little two footer, probably with some Deutsch plugs. Um, so then, once the firewall's on, because that sits to right about here, um, you know, you're not crawling around underneath, you can just plug in that Deutsch connector for the fuel pump. Um, and the rest we can tidy up once we know where, where things are going to land. Um, so, I need to go run, pick up some heavier gauge wire for the fuel pump. Uh, looks like it's probably 12 gauge. Um, and correspondingly, some 12 gauge clamps or uh, ring, ring terminals for these little itty bitty posts. Um, it's funny that they run, you know, you kind of need to run some heavy gauge wire, but then they get these little tiny posts. Um, but making pretty good progress there. Um, she's a little bit of a rat's nest still on the back, but it should be enough to keep things out of the way. And we can get her fired up and see how she does. I'm going to go track down some wire and hope 
hopefully we can button that up and start filling our booths. So inching our way towards uh, first start. Uh, for that we're going to need 12 volts. 12 volts, we're going to need a battery. Uh, so getting the tray back on. So we had the standoff mount on there, that's the factory FJ40 bracket that goes to the frame. Normally there's another metal tray that sits on top with kind of a rubberized coating. Um, that was well rotted and gone on, on this one. There was basically the, the rubber coating with nothing inside but crumbs. Um, and we had actually been running a Group 31 battery, which is kind of the next size up, a little bigger. Um, so I, what I ended up doing was just picking up a just a generic tray for a Group 31 battery um, and made a kind of adapter plate that, so there's a metal plate under this plastic um, that bolts to that factory standoff and then that this plastic tray gets tagged onto that metal plate. Um, so basically it's got support that's going to hold the battery and hold the tie downs, um, but it's kind of adapted to that factory tray. Um, the bigger battery is a little bit nicer, there's plenty of room for it under the hood. Um, and up here in the north, as it gets a little bit colder, it is nice to crank over the old 2F with a little more gusto. Um, they do say that the newer, there's a gear reduction starter that does work pretty good, uh, that also helps. Um, I dunked the original starter, it was still the factory starter on there. It's still humming along, so I let her go. It's mostly going to be a summer rig. It's not going to get a whole lot of cold weather driving, but um, I still have the 31 battery, so there's no point in getting a new new battery. We'll run her as long as she's still ticking along. Um, if the starter ever gives trouble, um, it'll get replaced with one of the gear driving ones, but for now, as long as she's cleaned up, I think she's hiding in there. Yeah, she came up nice and clean. It got kind of sandblasted and resprayed. So there's that fella. He's good to go. So chipping away, all the items on the list obviously is put a little oil in her. Um, so we'll get eight quarts down in the sump of break-in oil. And then we'll dig out a drive to run down the uh, oil pump through the distributor and give her a prime. Probably uh, check the fuel system first uh, so we can prime it as you know, closer to doing an actual start. Basically, you gotta fill her up, check all the remaining bits on the sniper wiring. Uh, from there, we can do the oil system prime. Gonna have to run through the HyperSpark setup. Um, the engine is at top dead center number one cylinder currently, so we should be prepped for that. Um, run through all that setup, and then right everything's there. We should be able to give her a crank. And so this is just my ground to the fuel pump. It's a little bit long because we gotta figure out routing later. Uh, it's just tagged onto the negative on the battery. Blue runs up to our relay here, and this red is the same dealio. So, so that red is the one that runs up to our fuse and our fuel pump relay. And in theory, if we pop this relay out, we should be able to jump her between the hot and the fuel pump. There she goes. There you can hear the fuel pump cooking along. I just got it jumpered on the fuel pump relay block holder there. Um, so we just got our two hoses going into a jug for now. Um, like I mentioned before, that does have that bypass recirculation fuel filter. So there you can see we're getting our our bypass coming through to pressure regulate. Uh, this fitting's looking clean. 
both of these fittings on the fuel pump are looking pretty good. They're looking good coming out of the fuel filter. We are looking good where the old fuel pump junction used to be. And we are looking good at the holly. And we're looking good at the cap as well. So we got her capped off here. Uh, we'll keep tabs on it, but again, everything's looking pretty good and snug. So we'll call that a win. So we can put our fuel pump relay back in and start to fiddle with the sniper. Alrighty, I uh, got our short ground wire on. Uh, we'll figure out what we want to do for routing there. But otherwise, got our three grounds for the the holly just tagged on for now. Obviously that's not where they're going to go, but powers up what we need. Same deal, we got our... Uh, just like that up a little bit. Got our two constant feeds for the holly, and then we've got our third, which would normally be pink, uh, for our 12 volt switched. Um, so if we dunk this guy in, we should get a holly screen. And there it is. Home, back, wizards. Oops. Well, I guess I can bring that over. How about we just do that? Oops. Helps me hit the right spot. Back. Oh, wizards. There we go. They actually give you this little uh, stylus, which does work better than your finger, although your finger technically does work. So we have a two injector 2300, I believe, with six cylinders. Engine displacement. Gotta crunch those numbers. So if you do the bore and stroke for this fella, uh, it is 20 over, which isn't a ton, but we'll put her in there. So if we do 3.72 by 4, it gives you 261. Whoa! That's fiddly. 2,000 cubic inches, that would be a big fella. Target idle speed, I believe is 650 on these guys. We'll go 700 to start. It is a stock cam. We are using a HyperSpark. Wide open throttle ignition timing. I believe we can go up to like 32, but we'll fix that. We won't be doing any wide open throttling. Fuel pump just fired up. Please cycle the ignition to complete the operation. So fuel pump does kick on. That's basically your prime on the key, so that's doing what it's supposed to do. Basic idle 700, spark, mission timing at idle, mission at cruise, idle should be 7, that's what we're in. We'll have to dig at these fellas. Not going to be. Cranking timing, that's a good question. That's a little more advanced than the seven stock, so there would be no mechanical advance. And there would be no vacuum advance, so I would put him down to seven. Okay.
We'll have to dig a bit at the timing curves, basically. Uh, basic idle, 700, okay. Spark, that should be okay. We're basically at our stock 7 degrees base timing. At idle, there should be no mechanical advance, and there should be no vacuum advance at crank, so 7 would give you that. Target AFR, 13, 14, 12, 5. So they're basically conservative at wide open throttle. A little bit at idle and cruise. They're going for economy. Fuel prime. Percent, 100% it is enabled. Yeah, multiplier. I believe if you look on the I Hate Mud forums, people have upped that a little bit. So we'll see. Back system. Static timing. Well, I think we're right about time to uh, start fiddling with that distributor. So before we do that, I'm going to prime the oil system. Made a quick drive to spin that oil pump. Uh, just used a big, I don't know what that is, M15 bolt, whatever the size is that matches the distributor shaft. Hit it with the flapper disc to taper it down like you would on the end of the distributor. Um, and then I just stuck a piece of fuel hose on there to keep it from banging around in anything. Um, but otherwise, fits down in the oil pump good. Um, and should let us run some oil through the system once she bites. And we got ourselves a mechanical gauge there because we don't have a dash. But, we'll give her a spin. So timing pin and the flywheels back there, you can kind of see it. Um, so that's the zero degrees bottom top dead center. So that's zero degrees top dead center. We are on the number one compression stroke. Um, so that is where it needs to be to start setting up the distributor. Zoink. So that is where we need to start. Snagger distributor. First things first, I'm just going to get our oil pump tang oriented to where it needs to be. Basically, we want to be one, two, three. We want our rotor pointed at the uh, number four, which is going to put our oil pump tang pretty close to horizontal. Down the chute, I can't see it right now. It's pretty close. Let's see what we get. Looking pretty close. So we are seated, pointed in the direction we want to be. Cam gear has some breaking paste on it. Gaskets on, we got to put our hold down bracket on, um, and then got to walk through the fun little procedure. This guy's got a little notch, it goes 
Um, they're basically the seat with the where the distributor cap would go. And then wherever I put that goofy little plug it. Basically they've got a this is the only real mystery they got. Um, they basically got this cap. It's got a little notch on it to match the notch on this adapter. Um, and that's going to get your, it's going to basically line up with your rotor. Plug this guy in out. I spoke too soon. I'm plugging you in. Come on out. There you go. So basically, rotor's got to sit this way. We are clockwise rotation, so it does say, I don't know if you can see it. It does say clockwise on there. Um, there's a different cap for different, different deals. Um, but as you bring him around to fit the rotor, there's the, interesting, so he's going to be way over. Where'd Minach go? There's Minach. He's going to face more like that. So there's my, so there's my rotor, there's my cap. And from there we should be able to seat that down and give her a go. So distributor's all snug down, rotor's pointing in towards the number four, or one, two, three, four. Uh, cap was on basically to set that uh, initial timing alignment. So it knows basically where bottom, top to the center is. Uh, notch is facing back. So wherever the notch is on this fella, so it's facing here. Rotor is on. Get out of the way, friend. So caps on, buttoned up. Distributor's nice and snug. Oil system's primed. We do have oil in the system. The valves have been lashed to at least a cold spec. They don't really give you one out of the book, uh, so it's a little bit, a couple, couple thou loose from their hot spec, which is what most people recommend when you have to do it. Uh, there is water in the radiator. Uh, there's no drive shaft, so we don't have to worry about anything there. Oil filter's on. Fuel system, no leaks. Ran that a couple times. Coolant sensors plugged in. Coolant lines are all plugged up. Vacuum is all plugged up. Uh, starter, we got a trigger wire there. Got to plug our coil or our uh, distributor back into the harness. Do those. And I just got to run some plug wires, and we'll have those wired up, and then we'll be getting pretty darn close. Fuel is good, plug wires are on. Got our timing light on hand to check what we got. Put this pen in my pocket. Got a little bit of a wire thing hanging here, but it's just temporary. So we got our keyed ignition. If we need to kill it, we can kill it. We can put that on, it'll prime it. Her to give her a shot. Got a fire extinguisher on hand in case anything goes funky. And timing light's ready. This is my starter key. So everything's clear. Everything's clear with the manifold. Oil pressure is good. Lost power on my sniper. 
So Mike from the future here. Um, on the first start here that we're doing, you can hear a tick that sounds like a knock. Uh, what that actually is, I checked it with a stethoscope at the time, it just didn't show up on camera. Um, it's the timing gears settling in after being pulled apart. Um, apparently that is not all that uncommon on these straight sixes like the 2Fs or even the Chevy 235s. Um, they do have a solid metal timing gear. Some of them have a rubber isolator. These were not that flavor. Uh, so you do hear what sounds like a knock. Uh, it's actually just the timing gears. Um, for whatever reason, the GoPro really picked up on it. Um, it was a little bit less loud in person. And once you get a few miles on it, and once you kind of got the braking oil out of it, uh, they obviously they quiet it down so you can kind of hear it's a little more what you would expect. Uh, so that's what the camera is picking up. It's not a bearing knock. It's just the timing gears doing their thing. Um, some will do it, some won't. Um, and like I say, it's kind of one of those, seems like it's, if you got the full metal gears, um, sometimes they do have a little bit of a tick until you bet them in. But anywho, enough yagging back to the uh, main thread that we were in. Well, we need to run her a little bit longer, of course, um, but she fires up pretty good. Um, battery's a little low on volts is what it's running into, um, so it's draw the fuel pump's drawing the battery down and then the sniper gets a little cranky. I don't have the alternator hooked up because I don't have a regulator, um, so I just got to put a better charge on the battery and we'll give her a little longer run and see how we do. But that's pretty good progress. Um, we will give her a check. Well, Mike from the future here again, uh, just doing some editing. I think the camera lost the last little bit there, uh, but that is where we're going to wrap it for today. Um, kind of nice to have the engine in the frame and running, got the sniper all on. Obviously the wiring's a mess, um, but uh, we'll tackle that next time when we slap the tub on um, and get some of that firewall work done. Uh, so that's where we're going to leave it for today. Uh, thanks for riding along and we'll catch you on the next one. See you.